The new and free WF View software has generated a lot of interest in controlling ICOM radios remotely. ICOM sell the RSBA1 software, which has similar functionality. Both provide the operator remote control of selected ICOM radios from a keyboard, mouse or touchscreen. VK3 B and T, VK5 TN, cheers. Audio streaming is available for both receive and transmit using rigs with built-in network interfaces, such as the IC705, 7610, 7850 and the IC9700. Remotely operating these radios inside your home network is straightforward. But what if you want to control a radio away from the shack? You may want to allow a fellow operator access to your radio from their QDH. Or maybe you want to access your station while on holidays. In this case, you'll need to configure your internet modem or router to make this possible. Modern ICOM radios use three UDP ports for remote operation. Port 50001 is the control port, port 50002 is the CIV port and port 50003 is for audio. What we need to do is configure your router to listen out for traffic or packets on these ports externally and pass them on or forward them to the radio when received. This is known as port forwarding. But first a cautionary word of warning. Some internet providers in Australia do not allow external access to your internet modem at the time of making this video. Many ISPs put all their normal domestic connections behind a CG NAT, which is carrier grade network address translation. This means your external address is actually shared with many other users and there's no way to forward incoming traffic specifically to your modem. It may pay to do a little research to see if your ISP allows this before losing any more hair. In this example, we'll be connecting an IC705 to an external computer which is running WFU or the ICOM RSBA1 software. The router we'll be using is a generic VDSL TP-Link Archer modem, which is supplied by most Aussie ISPs. Three things you need to know before you start is your username and password to log into your modem your external IP address of your modem, as well as the IP address of your IC705 when it's connected to your local home network. VK3FLJD, portable VK7JON. Let's turn our attention to the IP address of the IC705. First, a little background on how devices on your home network, and in this case, your IC705, gets allocated an IP address. Your modem has a built-in DHCP server. It's the job of this DHCP server to allocate IP addresses to devices connected to your home network. This includes things like phones, laptops, smart speakers, printers, televisions, and now radios, such as the IC705. The IP addresses allocated to these devices are not permanent and may change unless you tell the DHCP server otherwise. The default time allocation of an IP address, which is known as the address lease time, is 1440 minutes or 24 hours. After this time, the IP address allocated to a specific device may change. This is fine for most devices, as an IP address change will go unnoticed. But if you're away from the shack and trying to connect to your radio, you don't want the IP address of your IC705 to change so we need to create an address reservation. An address reservation tells the DHCP server to allocate the same IP address to a device over and over again. In other words, it's a static IP. Before we continue, make sure you've connected your IC705 into your home network as per the instructions in the manual. 
By the way, did you know that the IC705 only supports 2.4 gig wireless networks? To check the radio is connected to your home Wi-Fi network, on the IC705 press Menu, Set, WLAN Set, Connection Settings and look for DHCP. You should see an IP address in this field. In my case, it's 192.168.0.61. This address has been allocated to the radio by the DHCP server in the modem. If it's blank, you need to check your radio's connection to your home network and restart the radio. Your radio must be connected to the network to proceed. If all is good, make a note of the radio's IP address and using your favourite web browser, log in to your modem or router. The local IP address and username and password of the modem is usually printed on the device. A common address is 192.168.1.1. Another way of finding the address is running ipconfig at the command prompt on a Windows device. The gateway address is the one you want. Now we'll make the IP address of the IC705 static and configure the modem to pass external requests to the static address of the radio or the RSBA1 remote utility. Log in and you'll see the home page of the modem. This page on most modems will show you your public or external IP address. Click the Advanced tab in this case, then the Network tab followed by LAN settings. On other modems, look for the DHCP settings. In the Address Reservation section, click the Add button, then the Scan button. Browse until you find the IC705, then click the plus button. The current MAC and IP address will populate the reservation settings. Make a note of the IP address and click Save. Your radio now has a reserved or static IP address. Right now, any request to your external IP address will go unanswered. So let's get the modem listening out for packets on ports 50001, 50002, and 50003 and pass them on to your IC705. Staying in the Advanced tab, select NAT Forwarding and Virtual Servers. Click the Add button. We're going to make three entries here, one for each port. In the external port, enter the first icon port number of 50001. This tells the modem to listen for requests on port 50001 from the internet. In the internal IP setting, enter the IP address of your IC705. This tells the modem where to forward the request it hears on the internet to internally. The internal port needs to be set to 50001 and protocol to all. Click Save and repeat this process for the remaining two ports, 50002 and 50003. Hopefully by now, you should have an understanding as to why we needed to fix the IP address of the radio. That's how you set port forwarding in your modem or router. Now all that needs to be done is to test your handiwork. Load up WFU or the RSBA1 software on your laptop and tether your laptop to your phone, making sure you're not connected to your home network. Using WFView, head to the Settings tab. In the Radio IP Address field, enter your public IP address. This is the address on the basic page of your home modem. Or visit a site like whatsmyip.org to get your public IP. The radio control port should be left as 50001. And the username and password is that which you set in either your User 1 or User 2 setting in the IC705 or the RSBA1 remote utility. Now for the moment of truth. Hit the connect button and WFU should come to life if all is configured correctly. The dark art of routing IP addresses can be challenging for those who have never had to do such things. So hopefully this video will make things just that little bit easier.